In this video, we're going to be learning about typical behavior of endotherms and ectotherms to be able to survive in their environments. Now terrestrial, which means land, so land ectotherms and endotherms experience a greater range of temperature changes and have receptors to detect these changes. This is compared to aquatic animals. They show a variety of responses to regulate heat gain and loss from their bodies. Some birds, so birds are endotherms, some birds face changes within different seasons in some locations. This might mean that it's harder to produce heat due to the colder environments, or there is a limited food resources available for their survival, as in winter, of course, there's going to be less food available. So what they actually do is they can move to avoid these temperature extremes, and that behavior is called migration. So many birds that spend spring and summer in southeastern Australia migrate vast distances before the weather turns cold and the food becomes scarce. Migration is the movement of animals from one place to another in response to seasonal changes. They travel to places where food is available. These animals will usually choose the same path every year and the cycle is controlled by changes in the amount of daylight and weather. For example, there's the monarch butterflies that migrate, the orcas, caribou and ducks. Now some animals also seek shelter and they might do this to get out of the sun or if it's really windy and cold. So for both reasons, in extreme heat and extreme cold, animals will seek shelter. They might dig burrows or shelter in caves or rock crevices during the day to escape high temperatures or at night to escape low temperatures. For example, the Australian desert mouse, as you can see in this picture here. For ectotherms, such as lizards, basking in the sun and sheltering in shade may both be a part of their regular daily activity to keep their body temperature constant. So in the morning, the lizard might come out, bask in the sun, just for a little bit to keep it warm. By the time the middle of the day comes, it might be an extreme hot temperature. So then the lizard will then seek shade. And if it needs to in the afternoon, it might come out and bask again. It might do this multiple times. So it might move into the shade for shelter and then move out into the sun. And this in itself, the behavior is regulating the internal environment. The central netted dragon is also climbs up into trees or bushes when it is very hot to seek cooler conditions off the ground. So if the ground is really hot, especially if it's a desert type environment, they will seek shelter up a tree instead. Ectotherms such as lizards may alter their posture to expose a larger or smaller surface area to sunlight. In this picture here, you can see that the lizard is in this posture. Now the sun may be over in that corner to actually come in and land on this part of the dragon or if the dragon is trying to cool down, it might decrease the surface area of its body to the sun. By doing so, it might the sun may be in this position if it's a warmer part of the day and they may just want a little bit of sun. They may not want their whole body in the sun. Various brown snakes are found throughout Australia. For example, in Eastern Australia, the Eastern brown snake, Pseudodonga texalis. They're usually active during the day, but when it's very hot, they become nocturnal and their active period is at night. Many small desert mammals, such as the hopping mouse, which dig burrows and desert bandicoots, which make grass covered holes in the ground, seek shelter during the day from the heat and are active and feed at night. Endo endotherms in particular may huddle together like these penguins here or they might curl up to keep warm and reduce heat loss. And you might see this in your dogs, especially your cats. Your cats do curl up, especially in winter. For example, penguins and bats huddle in colonies and small mammals curl up and tuck their legs and tails around their bodies. Now, if you're actually stuck in the sea, and obviously with the ocean, it's a colder temperature than what we're used to, to actually survive, if you want to survive, you can do the same thing as curling up to reduce heat loss. So you bring your, your legs up to you and you can keep your arms underneath you. And by doing that, by doing this motion, you're generating heat with your muscles, your legs are close to you, so you're actually keeping heat in your core as well. So humans can actually do the same thing. 
you might find that you do this in bed at night if it's winter anyway you might find that you curl up more instead of laying really outright so in summary endothermic and ectothermic organisms have different types of behavioral adaptations to better suit their environments in the next module we're going to look at physiological and structural adaptations